Yeah. All right, let's talk about the men because this this is this is, this is a big this one. Is All a right. Big one. All right. Yeah. So the men are undergoing a significant retool for VNL. So here's how I break down this roster. Notable omissions: Matt Anderson, Max Holt, and Taylor Averill. Now, what I want to make clear about those three players is that their jersey numbers, 1, 12, and 19, respectively, have not been given away to anybody else. That tells me that they, that they are still in the mix with the national team and that I expect them to be back for the World Championships in August and September. So you, like, there's no number 1, there's no number 12, there's no number 19 for VNL. Those will be retaken by Anderson, Holt, and Averill um, when they come back for world championships. I'm kind of surprised that Averill's taking this tournament off. Uh, I'm not at all surprised that Anderson and Holt are taking this tournament off. It's well-deserved for those guys at this point in their career. Is, is Averill injured at all? Not that I know of. Uh, I mean, he finished out the season with Olsten and I, my understanding was that, that he was healthy, but I'm not totally sure. Okay. Fair enough. Just, just asking. Cause that, that might be the, the only question there, but yeah, um, I fully, you know, I, I would expect to see him, in, in, in this roster for the world championships and you know going I would back to last year he was one of my surprise omissions from from the olympic roster agreed so the other some of the other omissions from this team whose jersey numbers have been given away and therefore i expect to be rather permanently out of the mix uh taylor sander that that, that we've talked about that one a lot i don't expect him back anytime soon no. his his jersey number three has been given away um, Brendan Sanders jersey number has been given away. I think he's kind of done with indoor. Kavika Shoji's jersey number has been given away. I think uh, his national team career is probably over at this point. Um, Dustin Watton's jersey number has been given away. His career as the backup libero is probably over. I mean, he's he's older than Eric Shoji and not as good, so um, I, I don't blame him there. And then Ben Patch, his jersey number has been given away. He not only is he almost definitely done with the national team, I'm hearing that he might be retiring from volleyball entirely. So, whoa, that's, what? Yeah, that, that that's that's another conversation for sure. But that that has, has been what I've heard that he won't even go back to Berlin next year. Well, he'll go back and live in Berlin, but I don't even think he's going to play. Which is crazy. wow. I mean, I was just about to ask, like, is, is that a big loss for you guys? You know, I, I thought no. like like. You don't you don't think his his relationship with the national team is completely shattered and can never be repaired. He will never, never wear a USA jersey ever again. I promise. Wow. At least as long as Spira is the coach. Maybe a miracle happens down the road. But we we now we now have Gabby Garcia, who's going to be ready to play in the Olympics in 2024. So is uh, is he? But he's not on this roster. He can't be. You're not allowed to travel. He he can't compete in tournaments until 2024. Oh wait, you're right. Sorry, sorry, you're yeah, right. He, he can't be on this roster. So <laughs> that's he, that's a that's an obvious that's he, an obvious. Well, I, I, I'm I'm glad you were confused by that because other other people might be, and I wanted to make that clear. Gabby Garcia Fernandez renationalizing from Puerto Rico to the USA cannot suit up in a tournament for Team USA until 2024. He can he can be in the gym. He can practice with the guys, but he can't play tournaments until 2024. So that's why he's not on this roster. Fair enough. Uh, now, also, this, also, Micah Ma'a not on this roster. His jersey number was given away. Um, neither is Joe Worsley, Gage Worsley. You guys talked about this a little bit, but they had their a full podcast episode on Out of System where they talked about their choices not to come back to the national team. So we don't need to go over that. They already went over that directly from the source. So go listen. Hundred percent. What are what, what are a few like? You know, you obviously heard what Dan and I talked about. Can we talk about some of the surprise additions to this team? Namely, number three, James Shaw coming back in that at the setter position. Absolutely blew my mind. Out of left field. It blew my mind. James Shaw has not played indoor volleyball in at least four years. Yeah. And the last time he did, he was the backup opposite on Zaxa and only played half the year. He was he, he started at Padova for yeah uh, right, that's a what, year like, that was his first year yeah he played with Stephen Mari played for ta- with Taylor Averill that year then he was the backup to uh, Luciano DeCecco on Perugia but like then after after going to Zaxa being the backup opposite let's see I'm looking at his volley box no he Apparently, played for Narbonne and then he played for Narbonne Piacenza and, I don't ever remember him being on Piacenza I don't think he ever played there i don't think he suited up there i don't think that ever happened he tried the beach briefly Mm -hmm. but really to me from following him and and so he's james shaw is my age i saw him play all all growing up he's he was a born 94 
He was on the same club team as Ben Patch my 18s year, which was just a ridiculous cheat code. Um, but he went to Stanford, was really fun to watch, big, crazy physical setter. He was up so high contacting the ball that he was setting 31s downwards. It was crazy. And I, I always loved watching him. But once he got overseas, it, it was it was the combination of injuries and excuses. And his career just never went anywhere, despite getting way bigger and better contracts than he ever deserved because he's Don Shaw's son. Like his father is a big deal. And he's super well connected that he was still able to get these contracts. Like who gets a who gets a contract on Zaxa their first season after changing positions? Like that's not a thing. That should not be a thing that happens. So and I think it's for the same reason that after going trying trying out the beach, n- not catching on there, doing anything positive, that the, the same reason he's back in the indoors because he's just connected and he comes from a powerful volleyball family. There's no other reason I can see for bringing back in a 28 year old who hasn't played indoor in three years as a setter after switching positions away from setting. This does not make any sense to me. Do you think it shows kind of the lack of depth in that position in, in the U S and in, in general, especially without, you know, like two of potentially two of the best setters in the country turning the national team down? Well, Mike, Ma- I, I understand he was a national team level prospect. Joe Worsley was not. He's the same in the same age group as Ma'a and Tuaniga and is just way too small compared to those two guys and not like better than those two guys at any one skill to have ever seen court time over them. Mm-hmm. So I'm not that surprised about Joe Worsley's choice. I am kind of surprised about Mike Ma'a's choice, but hearing him talk about it, I'm not surprised at all. Uh, and after we go after we go down the rest of the roster, I want to I want to bring it back to that point about why about the the national team program losing its appeal and the the just the the cost benefit analysis of playing for the national team not being what it used to be. But also on the other side of it, like being an out of system looks like the best gig in volleyball right now. It looks like they're having a blast. They're going across the country. They're making videos. They are like the peak of volleyball right well, that's now. that's exactly so what really i mean bad. that's exactly what i mean is that if the if the u.s national team if like that's the that should be the pinnacle of what you can possibly do in the game and if the u.s national team can't do more for you than just you know driving in a van and playing grass tournaments over the summer then that's a failure of the national team program in my opinion well, I think it's ultimately a failure, in my opinion. It's a fail- failure of all international volleyball in total. Yeah. Right? Because we, we've we talked about how dedicated you have to be to be on the national team. And you're not getting paid really to, to do this type no. of stuff. You're staying in like maybe not the best housing. You're traveling the world. It's You're playing a lot of matches. Like you don't get an off season. So even though they're traveling in a van to all these tournaments, you know that their off season is much more of an off season than if you're playing for the national team. Like this is this is exactly why. Like I think the national team would be a much more appealing factor if you had m- m- limit more more limited uh, of events. Like do we really need the VNL? Like yes, do yes we do we need the VNL? Yes. But at the end of the day, do we need the, these rules where you have to have so many of your superstars to play because we're just burning them out. Yeah. Well, we, we talk about it a lot. Uh, we, we mistreat our athletes horribly in the sport of volleyball. They deserve time off and guys like Matt Anderson and Max Holt fully deserve the time off that they're getting. So back to this roster, uh, a couple of guys, a couple of familiar faces that are back. Uh, Aaron Russell is back in the mix. Thank goodness. I can't wait to see him in a USA Jersey again. Um, TJ DeFalco and Thomas Jeschke, th- those three will be the core of the outside hitter position well, going th- forward. Th- so that's my big question for you here, Rob. On the Canadian national team, the setting position is where the big battle is. For me, looking at this roster, it has to be among the outside hitters. You know, Russell is going to want to get reestablish himself. Jay's get a great season. So did DeFalco. So to me, like for for you, who are you going to be see as the two guys starting for this team in the VNL? I think that it'll be Russell and DeFalco. Uh, I, I I think that they have they have that more prototypical national team build when when you don't have w- w- like without Matt Anderson on this team we're going to be bad at opposite like no matter no matter what you say and as good as Jeshke was this year and as much as I just love that kid so much being from Chicago the out of system scoring potential is better for especially for Aaron Russell but for I think for T J DeFalco as well more so than Jeshke. And that it is all dependent on Russell getting back into the mix, getting back into the program, getting back to the system and becoming healthy. Um, 
But the, those three guys, uh, Russell, DeFalco, and Jeschke, I expect to see a lot of time combined. Uh, in meaningful matches, it will, it will always be some combination of two of those three guys. I do not understand why Garrett Mwangatutia continues to see time on these rosters. It makes no sense. The man is playing in Egypt, for God's sakes. Like, he's not taking his club career seriously enough to keep making these rosters. It makes no sense. I hope that he sees no court time. But, of course, we're talking about John Spira. Mwangatutia went to UCLA. Therefore, he will eat away court time from a young prospect that deserves it. It's stupid. It makes no sense. What about a three outside system like we're seeing for Italy, like we're seeing for Dude, Tantino? Dude, I don't hate it. Play Jeschke, DeFalco, and then put Russell opposite the setter. I would love, a love three- to see that innovation. It, it lines up so well. We see Russell like slide over and hit D-ball for the U.S. in transition and goofy plays all the time. Like He can bang on the right side. And not and to mention you have Michael Christensen there who's going to exactly. be able to set that type of offense. I right? would like, love that. Spread I really it like would. peanut butter. Yeah. I, um, I really would love to see it. So speaking of Michael Christensen, he's back. Thank God. Can't wait to see him play again. But the second setter position now without Kavika Shoji is wide open. I think it would be by default. It would go to Josh Tuininga. We'll get a decent number of touches. But uh, instead of James Shaw, who I hope we don't see very much at all, uh, Quinn Isaacson, the other setter on this roster, like you and Dan were talking about, him, we didn't know who he was. He's set for Ball State this year. Okay, he is young, and he is awesome. I really hope that he gets some touches. I think that of the NCAA American setters this year, it, it was him and um, and the UCLA kid whose name I don't remember, unfortunately. They, those are the two the two best American setters in the NCAA this year. Uh, Bryce Dvorak for Pepperdine, who actually played for Emil this past week and winning VLA Cup, was just behind them. Uh, Aiden Knipe did not have a good year. And then past that, there's not much good, many good American setters in the NCAA, but Quinn Isaacson is really good. And just because he goes to Ball State, like nobody knows who he is. But I hope that he gets a little bit of run, a little bit of run this VNL. I would much rather see him over James Shaw. All right. What about on the opposite position? You mentioned Anderson not not being there. You have a few, like basically your three option guys are all guys who play in lesser leagues who have never really, never been really been able to make a name for themselves uh, elsewhere. Now, my guy, I think I would go with Kyle Russell, Mm -hmm. but, but a legend on the discord is Mr. J Canes and it's usually in jest. However, Adenus has been reporting that he was the big factor basically for the team that was looking to be winning the Polish league one and to getting that, that promotion into the Pus Liga. Is there a possibility that we are going to see the flightless wonder, Mr. <laughs> uh, Mr. J Canes suit up for the U S national team? Yeah, we like to meme about Jake Haynes a lot on the Discord because watching him is so hilarious. He's so big and astonishingly unathletic. But uh, Adonis is right. He did have a really good year, uh, the back half of the year for uh, his team that did win the Polish second division and, and is getting promoted to the Plus Liga. Uh, Ryan Kunin, another American outside hitter, was on that team as well. Um, I think. Oh, boy, I, I, let's go. I, I think we could. I think we could see Jake Haynes. It's not impossible. Uh, I think we already know what you get out of Kyle Ensing. I mean, he made last year's Olympic team for a reason because of how steady he is. But, I mean, the man's playing in Israel. That's a significantly lesser league, and he's never going to physically dominate anyone. I'm with you, Everett. Uh, I would like to see Kyle Russell get serious run. He's as he's big, physical, jumps really high, has a great arm. He's like the prototypical opposite build. He just like totally fits the the look and the play style of what you kind of need an international opposite to be these days. And he's not as, he's not as polished and he's not quite as controlled as, as like a, as, as an Anderson is at least in his prime, but he's got the high contact point. He's got the physicality and he just played in a Korean league where they really grind you physically and expect a ton of production out of you, despite against significantly inferior block and competition. Uh, Kyle Russell is my personal favorite opposite of these three. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's his ju- job to lose. Um, like you've said, like he he's mostly been playing in Korea. I know that he did have uh, a couple of good seasons with Berlin, um, and, yeah. and got and put up put up some good numbers uh, with them. But yeah, I think this is Kyle Russell's job to lose. Uh, ultimately, I think he would be a good backup right side to uh, to Anderson. Like we saw him go on that. What was it? Eight 
eight, eight, uh, eight in straight eight yeah. serving run in, in Korea this year, so you know that he can bomb from the baseline. There's just no other opposite in the gym right now who's no. not named Gabby Garcia who has that power. Nobody 100%. else has that arm talent. Nobody else can hit the ball that hard. Nobody else can score out a system like that. And Russell on a good day can't. And I think yeah. for that reason, he deserves to run. Ultimately, Russell with Michael Christensen setting him too, I think can as well, right? And I think that uh, like, we could see that he can put away the ball consistently, being one of the top uh, hitters in Korea. And when you go to play in Asia like that, and you're the o- only foreigner, you're expected to produce on a regular basis. And he does from everywhere, right? right. So once you have... Uh, Michael Christensen into that mix, dishing him that butter, and you've got a full team around him. Like Kyle Russell, maybe even like uh, maybe it's too early to say this, but he has the potential of even being a better option than Anderson is at this point. I don't know. I would not say that, but uh, Russell has never broken through in the national team to the point where he's gotten to play with Mike Christensen before. And like you're saying, Christensen is the caliber of setter to make everybody around him look better. So I'm very excited to see that. Now, uh, f- I, I wanted to segue into the middle position, which is okay, probably. Okay, I was, was going to ask you about that. Things. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, the three guys who we've seen before David Smith, Jeff Jandrick, and Mitch Stahl. Um, so, without without Max Holt, without Taylor Averill, you're going to see a lot of those three guys. Um, Smith is hopefully going to take some time off, well deserved. I mean, he's playing Champions League this weekend, and VNL starts like immediately after. Um, but I'm really excited that Patrick Gassman got this call. Uh, he had a good year in Brazil. Uh, otherwise, he would have been at VLA Cup this past weekend, but he wasn't because he's in the national team gym. That's good news. And then uh, younger prospects than that, both Merrick McHenry and Tyler Mitchum have potential. Uh, Mitchum in particular, he's 6'11". He's got the oh, yeah. size. He's an unreal attacker, and his blocking is really, really improved. Uh, uh, McHenry is a little smaller but more dynamic, but Mitchum is just the big, giant stud like project middle character that I think the national team could really use. Yeah, hundred percent. I remember watching him when he played for Lewis, when he, when he came Can-Am, up here. And he yeah. Was, yeah. And he was definitely one of the best gym, middles in the gym. Um, he's big. He's, he's physical. Uh, he's got some room to grow in terms of his overall game. Um, but he has all of the physical attributes. And I mean, we've seen it before, especially in the middle. If you have the physical attributes, you don't necessarily have to have the all around gameplay. Uh, but he's, he's really good and he's really physical. If you have to pick one guy between Mitch, like for me, it's Mitchum and Gassman. Uh, I don't really know anything about McHenry, so uh, I'm going to go with the two guys I know. Who do you pick between Mitchum and, and Gassman? Gassman, because he's played elite volleyball this year. Uh, McHenry, or sorry, Mitchum just making the jump from the NCAA. That is a heck of a lot bigger of a jump than playing, like, than starting in Brazil and playing World Club Championships and like everything that Gassman has has now done. And he, he played for Hawaii. He played at a higher level in the, in the NCAA than Mitchum did. So uh, I, I am glad that Gaspin is in this mix. And with the absence of Holt and Averill on this roster, I think he's really going to get some minutes. And he deserves it. Uh, he's that caliber of a player. And he's got that one year of international under his belt that makes a big difference in the VNL. Fair enough. I but at the same time, you know, Tyler Mitch might be have that upside, right? Oh yeah. And if you're and if you're looking to round out that middle roster, like David Smith, you're probably not making a run to to twenty twenty four. He thinks um, he is. Uh, he, that's that's his okay. plan. But I don't know if that will be the best option for the USA in Paris. Fair enough. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Right, right. seeing right. Um, although he does. I thought his drop off after last year to this year was going to be significant, and I haven't really seen much, to be honest. Yeah, he's played so, great. He's played he, great I, I, I think year. he's played. He played. He's played great for 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 Zaxa. So that might be my only question because I think ultimately I, I agree with you, Tyler or Pat Gasman is the better player right now. But we both know the ceiling is there for Mitchum. Yep. Uh, talking about the libero position really quickly. So now that Dustin Watton seems to have moved on, it's uh, it's up to two guys in this roster to take that second libero spot. Either Kyle Dagest. You know, out of Stanford, who's about 26 or yeah, Mason or Mason Briggs, who's around. still who's still at Long Beach State. And because of the age factor, I hope that Briggs gets more minutes than than, than D'Agostino does. Uh, he's got the upside and there's at least a chance that when Eric Shoji hangs it up, which uh, hopefully won't be until after L.A. in 2028, Briggs will ha- will still be in a point in his career where he might be able to come in and be that guy. D'Agostino right now is just too old and his overlap with Eric Shoji just won't line up in a way that he'll ever 
really get to be that guy for the national team. So I think this is Briggs's spot from age alone. I definitely don't think he's ready to play on the national team yet. Um, but maybe but yeah, isn't isn't this the same situation as we just had with the middles, where you've got yeah. one guy who's battle tested professionally yep. and another guy coming from the NCAA? But but at at libero, I think it's a totally different story considering the who else is in the pipeline elsewhere in the mix. Shoji is the guy. You will never okay. there will never be a meaningful USA match not started by Eric Shoji at libero until after the 2028 Olympics at the soonest. Uh, so it, it it doesn't matter who who comes in after that. You're going to be a backup on the roster, and I want those guys to learn as much in the gym as they can because in meaningful tournaments, Shoji is going to be playing every point of every match. In the middle, it's a totally different story. Okay, fair enough. I like the, I like I like that response. Um, is there any guy on this list? Uh, on like the new guys that we're actually going to be seeing in the gym? Like I don't expect to be see, seeing Spencer Olivier no, playing VNL. Neither. You know, none, none of these younger guys, as much as I love Cody Kessel, is he really going to crack that lineup? Maybe not. I think he's the fifth outside hitter. Uh, I think it's Russell. No, oh, never mind. Russell DeFalco. Uh, Rus- Russell DeFalco, Jeshki Mangatutia, for better or for worse. And then I think Kessel's the fifth guy. And I like seeing a guy like Cody Kessel who's grinded throughout his career, who's improved, who's played good club volleyball in a good league, get rewarded with a look at the national team. And again, this is probably a, a, a function of who his father is. Uh, John Kessel has an extremely high amount of influence, and it's, it's sort of the same factor for, for James Shaw. But Kessel deserves this, and I don't think James Shaw does. Um, so Kessel might get a little bit of time just from, from the sheer effort that he's put into his career, and he's a great guy, and I'm really happy for him getting this. But he's not a national team caliber outside hitter. His, the things he lacks are passing and arm talent. He uh, doesn't pass the ball as well, and his arm is not good. Despite being just phenomenally athletic, um, his 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 arm is not not good enough to score at this level. So I do think he'll get a little bit. He'll he'll make the team to travel, but I think that uh, the dominant number of minutes for this VNL are going to come from Russell, DeFalco, and Jeski, with then a little bit of Magatutia when you need some passing. I think it's really going to be those four guys. The guys coming up, that so Brett Wildman, Will Rotman, Spencer Olivier on this roster, I think they're good to include. Brett Wildman has the most potential of those three, and he's the only one I think there's a chance that we see even dress for VNL. Fair enough, yeah. On the, the Cody Kessel side of things, he's been playing for Berlin for the past few seasons, sometimes starting, sometimes not. You he know, just not... extended there. He's going back next year. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. So congratulations on him. But you're, you're you're absolutely right. Like I can see him as kind of made, filling in some numbers, but not necessarily being a guy. Rob, is this a team that can compete with the best? No, uh, not at all. Not not without Matt Anderson. Not without Max Holt. Uh, you might be able to survive in the middle with Dave Smith and either Mitch Stahl or Jeff Jendrick. Uh, you, you've obviously got still my pick for the best setter in the world. You've got a world class libero. Uh, you might get something good out of your outsides if you play the right combination of Russell, DeFalco, and Jeschke, but o- only Russell has that top 10 in the world potential, uh, and, and we know he's not even close to that point right now. Um, but without without an opposite, without without a top 15, top 20 even opposite in the world, this team is not going to win VNL, and that's okay. Uh, th- this, this is a building sort of summer for VNL. This is a chance to get some guys time with the senior a team with Micah Christensen passing next to Eric Shoji, like get those guys, like don't just send them to Norseekas as a B team and see how they do play them with the starters and see how it goes. See what real potential there is when you're playing alongside the core of your team for the next two quads. And the, the opposite, the lack of, of Matt Anderson will, will provide a, a pretty significant ceiling on this team. Unless Spira somehow pulls the level of creativity to do the three outside hitter thing, give it a try. I would love to see it. I don't see it happening. It's not not something I would ever see in Spira's character to run that system. So I, I expect this this USA team to be okay at VNL. I think they'll go middle of the pack. And of the 16 teams, I would be thrilled if they made the top eight and go to the finals. But I, I don't know if I expect that. Fair enough. I I like that answer. Anything? Is there anything else that we've missed from this team? Is there anything? Is there anyone you think has been omitted? 
Uh, any people left off uh, that I, we haven't discussed? I'm trying to think of some opposites, and there just really aren't any. Uh, we already talked about Ben Patch a little bit. I think Jalen Penrose might have deserved at least a look. Uh, I, I, I talked to him this past weekend. He got a call, but they they, they chose not to bring him in. Uh, I, I think he's he's the same position in that in that way as Cody Kessel, where he's grinded mm-hmm. through his professional career and he's played in decently good leagues and he's produced well and he's clearly taken his professional career seriously a lot more seriously than a Kyle Ensing or a James Shaw who still made this roster but uh, Penrose just didn't isn't the name and doesn't have the the like he's not a west coast guy he's not like that SoCal prototypical guy who the national team just really always fawns over so I think Penrose was left off for that reason Past that, I, I, I'm okay with this roster. Uh, the, the guys that they brought in, like the young guys from the NCAA they brought in to at least get touches, I think are good. Um, I know there's even more than that that are in the gym who just weren't named to the 25-man roster. So uh, I, I'm okay with this. My expectations for this USA team are honestly just not that high. Uh, I think that world championships this year, uh, medal is possible, maybe, but you're really going to have to develop two elite level outside hitters from what you've got right now and then get Anderson and Holt back in the mix. Fair enough. Now there's reports as well that uh, you guys are going to be bringing on another assistant coach um, in the form. Is it Javier Weber? Who's, who's yeah. coming in to be, yeah, to be your guys' that. assistant coach alongside Spraw? Is that something that's needed? You know, the American program for so long has been so American. Do they need that outside perspective to maybe shake things up a little bit? I don't hate it. Uh, it, it certainly what we've seen from Team USA the last couple major tournaments has not worked at all, uh, particularly the Olympics. So uh, bring in a guy with another perspective. Yeah, Javier Weber, Javier Weber has coached all around the world in so many different systems. I think he's Argentinian, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm all about it. I see what, what sort of different approach he can bring to the gym, see if Spira takes some inspiration from him, a guy that's been – in pro club volleyball for a lot longer in like seeing different national team styles. I think it's great. I think it's a good addition. We'll see how much visible impact it has. Do you have any feeling that the USA is just kind of biding their, their time? Like, do you see like any of these young guys they're bringing into the program really making an impact in the future? No, that's, that's the short answer. Uh, I think you've got, You've got enough young middles in Jendrick and Stahl and then Averill, who's slightly older, to survive through LA 2028. I think you've got you've got Christensen and Shoji through LA 2028. I think you've got Russell, DeFalco, and Jeschke through LA 2028. Uh, I think you've got Anderson through 2024. And then you've got Garcia after him to build around, so that's great. After Shoji, we'll need a libero. After Christensen, we'll need a setter. But we've got six years to figure those things out and the kids that are coming in the pipeline right now i don't see it i think uh like, like we talked about a couple weeks ago uh, when we we're talking about the the down down period ncaa right now and just the way the usa pipeline got kind of decimated by covid when it wasn't all that good of a system to begin with mm-hmm. it's going to take a couple years to start producing olympic caliber players again and fortunately until that catches up we have olympic caliber players now so what, what's what? So I'm not worried about Paris. I'm not even worried about LA. I think we'll be able to survive those two Olympics. If not, make maybe make a run at a medal. After LA, we're going to need some real, real legitimate new talent in, and it, we'll we'll see that in the next three to four years. I don't see it right now, and that's okay. Fair enough. Very thorough. Is there anything else to mention about about this roster? I don't think so. I think we covered it. Um, I think it's it's pretty clear what guys you're going to see when matches matter, and I'm curious to see the approach of of the balance between trying to win matches with good rosters and getting guys some minutes. I don't really know. Uh, I, I think that now with the, with the world rankings the way that they are, uh, you've got to prioritize winning matches more than the USA usually does at VNL. Uh, and our world ranking, I think we're seventh right now, and we're going to have to play – a lot of starters, a lot of this tournament to avoid that slipping down even further. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I think Spira's hand is going to be forced to play his guys more in this VNL than he probably would like to. But I think that's a good thing. I think we mess around in this tournament too much. 
there, there aren't enough tournaments that the USA takes seriously and actually tries to win. It's really only two. It's really only world championships and Olympics. And I think that this team needs to remember and relearn how to win consistently. And so I think if Spira were to play the guys more, I think that would be a step in the right direction. And I think the system is going to force him to do that. So that might be a good thing. I mean, hey, but for all we know, it could just be a whole lot of Garrett Magachatia this summer. <laughs> Stop that. You're putting me in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for that breakdown. Um, VNL gets kicked off in less than a month. Uh, we are going to be soon. in Ottawa is June 6th, June 7th. Um, yeah, June 7th. So, yeah, we, were, we are going to be in Ottawa. And, uh, yeah, I'm stoked for it. It's going to be a good time. Can't wait. Uh, I love national team season. Uh, I can't wait to see teams suiting up for their countries. And I can't it's wait to also going to be your again. first VNL. I've, like I've, I've been to VNL, okay, but I've, yeah. I've, ne- I've been there. I've just been there as a fan where I buy tickets and watch the games. I've never been there inside the ropes before, and I'm so excited about Ottawa. All right. Well, 